So this is the Matillion user interface. In the main window is a graphic showing you many of the load and unload components that you can connect to to load data into your Amazon Redshift data warehouse. If you look under the components section under the orchestration load and unload, you can see there are various components that load and unload from CRM and marketing, on-prem and cloud databases, document and file formats, ERP, social networks, various internet connections, finance, and quite a few connectors to Amazon Web Services themselves, such as DynamoDB, EMR, RDS, S3, etc. To date, there's more than 50 sources that Matillion can connect to to load and unload data to and from your Amazon Redshift data warehouse, and they continually add more. So in this demo, we're going to go over a Matillion orchestration job where you pull in data from various sources tied in to a transformation job that does some aggregations and calculations on Redshift itself, utilizing its massive parallel processing capability. So first, we're going to gather the data and load it into Redshift. We're going to capture the data from RDS, a Rust API, an S3 bucket, and also an iterative manner with two S3 buckets. So first, we're going to connect to the RDS source, which is an AWS service. You can see here that the database type is MySQL, and then I set my RDS endpoint to that database. I need to provide the connection to the source database, so I provide my MySQL query to pull the data from this source. Then I need to define the staging area where the data will be copied before being put into the target table, raw plane info, which will be on Redshift. Next, we pull data from the REST API, where you can connect to any RESTful or XML-based API. You select the API component, the API query, which we're going to use, and then we're going to create a custom API profile. So we go to Manage API Profiles, and we see the Airport REST API. If I click on the settings, you can see that I've defined my data source with an RSD script to import the data from my RESTful endpoint, which is here, using my API key, and then I'm pulling in all of these attributes that I want to pull from this API. If I click on test, you'll see it perform the Git operation for the IATA table, which stands for the International Air Transportation Association. And it imports the data, if we click on it, in JSON, in columns and row format. Here you can see I'm selecting my API profile that my data data source is IATA, and the data selection are all of the attributes that I pulled in. I define my target table, raw airports, and then I define the staging area where the data is imported before it's copied into the target table. So this is how we're going to pull the data from the REST API. In the third step, we're going to load the carrier file, which is nothing but a CSV file sitting in an S3 bucket. Here you can see the S3 URL location, and if I click on it, you see all the S3 buckets that are available on my account. And then you set the S3 object prefix, which is carrier CSV, which is a comma delimited file. Then I provide the target table here, raw carriers, and it will copy the data into my target table. In the step before, in the create replace table component, I defined the table and the metadata for that. If I click on table metadata, you can see that I'm pulling data into my code and carrier attributes. The fourth extract and load, I'm iteratively pulling in all the data stored in my S3 buckets for the flight data. If I click on my first S3 load component, here is my S3 bucket, and I provided my object prefix, which is 19. So it will pull all the flight data from 1990, 1991, 1992, and so on, and it'll keep loading those files into the target table. Similarly, we're pulling all the flight data with the object 
object prefix of 20, which will capture flight data from the year 2000 onwards. At this point, I'm going to wait for all these steps to complete before calling any other steps with the AND component. And then I'm going to call my transformation job, which will run the transformation component called create flights back transformation job. At this point, I'd like to say that you can daisy chain save jobs to create very large complex orchestrations and transformations on your Redshift data warehouse. So now let's look at the create flights fact transformation job. We are looking at all the transformations that are going to happen inside the Redshift cluster. First we see the flight table input component with the table name raw flights and I've provided all the table columns. If I click on the tab sample, it will pull in all the data in Redshift from that particular source. If I click the refresh button, it shows that I have about 150 million rows. If I click on the data button, it will pull in the first 500 rows of data from that source. You can also look at the plan, which shows you the query plan that's going to run on Redshift. You can also look at the SQL, and it shows you the SQL that will be executed executed in the background, generated via the drag and drop interface. Next we use a filter component with the filter condition that the tail numbers aren't blank. Then I filter some more with the filter component condition that the elapsed time isn't zero to ensure that the flight took off. Then I'm going to use a join component to get the plane information into my data set. If I look at the output columns, I can confirm that I get the information from both the flights and the plane data. If I click on the data set of the join and then click sample, the row count went from about 140 million rows to 92 million rows, which is logical since I filtered and did a join on the data set. Now I add more information to get both the arrival and departure airports, and then I do some calculations on the columns. I calculate the long delay ratio and the long delay flag. Let's look at the sample now to ensure that those calculated columns are appended to the table. Let's scroll to the end, and sure enough, here's the long delay ratio and log delay flag calculated columns. Now I'm going to rewrite that table into the final target table name fact table. Going back to the orchestration job, once the transformation is complete, I use an SNS component with the topic name reinvent alarm that sends a message to my team that the job is completed. And then I also use an SQS component with a queue name reinvent demo queue with a message that says to execute any other job after this job is complete. Now I'm going to run this entire orchestration and transformation job from the beginning. So you can look over all of the tasks that it loaded the carriers and that took two minutes, 14 seconds. You can look down for RDS, REST API, then it goes into the transformation, so there were iterations and all in all, it took approximately less than 15 minutes to run that orchestration and transformation using Matillion, harnessing Redshift's massive parallel processing power.